pop in a hand tell, would you please? Sure. Well, how much is that going to be? Twenty cents. I think you better make it just a cup of coffee. Okay. Sorry, I'll get you another one. That's all right, no problem. Well, if you like. Well, here, get going on this. Thank you. Another coffee. Yeah. Mind if I sit here? No, please don't. Aren't you eating anything? I'm not hungry. You're English, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Actress? Sort of. Sort of? Well, that were the chorus. We came out from England and opened in Philadelphia. What's wrong with that? It closed in Philadelphia. Gee, that's tough. You sure you're not hungry? Why should I? Well, chorus girls usually are. And if you don't mind me saying so, you look hungry. Very hungry. Waiter, a menu. All the menus. As a matter of fact, I could eat a horse. By the look of this place, you'd probably have to. I want to talk to you. Pardon me. So you bought yourself a steamship ticket. Well, what about it? Trying to run out on this, huh? Frank can get himself a new lawyer for his dirty work. I'm quitting, and I'm quitting for good. Hey, wait a minute. He'll have something to say about that. He can say what he likes, but I'm still quitting. Have it your own way. Well, what are you going to have? One chicken and ham, one potato salad, six mince pies, and twelve coffees. No chicken and ham, no potato salad, no mince pie, plenty coffee. What is this? New Year's Eve, or later. Say, listen, I've got dinner at my apartment. I just dropped in here on the way home. You better come along. Oh, it's all right. You can put a table in the hall and keep your hat and coat on. What do you say? It's chicken and ham. I'll risk it. Sending us back to England tomorrow. Well, if that isn't a laugh, I'm sailing for England tomorrow myself. You are? Yeah. Yes, but we shall be in the steerage. Well, what does that matter? You can come to everything as my guest. Can I? You bet. There you are. All the eats in the world. And if you want to take your things off, in there. <laughs> Scared lady, I ain't going to hurt you. I ain't going to hurt nobody. I'm just hungry, that's all. A leg of a chicken. Just a leg of a chicken. That's what I was going to have. Give me a break, lady. But he won't tell you. I can't take chances. What do you want me to do? Keep that guy in the living room and close the curtains. Then I can scram across the balcony and make my getaway to the next apartment. You don't know what it is to lose your job and be hungry. Don't I? I haven't eaten anything else like diamond cufflinks or all. You got me wrong, lady. You haven't taken your coat off. No. I was rather cold. I'll draw the curtain. Oh, never mind about that. What you need is a drink. Hope we're not busting up your party, Mr. Cooper. Oh, that's okay. The lady's just leaving. Wait outside and follow. Okay, Mr. Brown. Uh, good night, Mr. Watson. Car, Jenny. Come on, Car. sweetheart. Come on, come on. I come see on. you in the show business. Sorry, sister. Oh, what a pity. I thought you might have given me a job. Come on, get going. But I'm not going. As no yeah. said, I've quite decided to step. Get going. The bus has got urgent business. I don't mind what. All right, I will. Oh, oh yes, talk. Come on, sweetheart. I think you've got beastly bad manners. Come on, sister. Come on, beautiful. I haven't got all day to wait for right. you. See you on the boat. Oh, I'm going to have a lot of time. Thank you for having me. Sorry your friends are so rude. Goodbye. Well, Billy. Well, you bought a steamship ticket yesterday. Well, what about it? Nothing. 
A little vacation in Europe. You worked hard for me. You've earned a vacation. Is that all you've come to tell me? No, Billy. The fact is, these boys have got you wrong. They say it isn't a vacation at all. They say you're quitting. It isn't fair to say things like that, is it, Billy? I am quitting. Billy, you mustn't talk like that. I'm quitting, and I'm quitting for good. What's the trouble? A wave of conscience. Something you wouldn't understand. Sure I understand. I respect a guy who's got a conscience. It shows character. Nice place you got here. Must have cost a bit. Reading this? You remember when you first came to me? A small-time attorney, not a dime in the world. Come on, friend. Don't worry, I won't lose your place. Say what you've got to say and get out. Maybe I paid you more than was good for you. You got value received. I've kept you and your mob out of jail dozens of times. I'm just fed up and I'm through. I don't like people to leave me. I get kind of fond of them. Listen, friend. I told you I'm through and I mean it. I've pulled strings and I've cut corners so that you and your crowd could get away with murder in this town. I'm sick of it. I'm clearing out and I never want to see your ugly, slimy, dirty, double-crossing face again. I'm going to try... Guess you lost his place after all. He wouldn't have minded. He was a nice guy. Where you think you go, eh? I just came in out of the court. Yeah? Maybe you tell her that to the cops. Come on. As I came out in the hall, the big elephant was striking a match with one hand. Oh. That's what I was trying to find out. Just as I was having a good look, the two men came along and pushed me out. And what did you do then? I walked home. <laughs> with the chicken bone in your hand and all. <laughs> oh, I ate that. You catch your life, I did. All the same, you know, I'm worried about it. Surely to God, it's a strange lawyer has friends of that sort. Oh, I'll ask him about them on the boat. And you shouldn't have let that burglar go free. He wasn't a burglar. I suppose he was in a way. But he was hungry. And I know what it feels like to be hungry. When you've lost your job and you don't know where the next one's coming from and... you feel all the world's against you and... Now, was that chicken bone the last thing you had to eat since yesterday afternoon? Well, it was... it was a very big bone. <laughs> Bet the hind leg of an ostrich wouldn't be big enough, I'm thinking. I'll go and get your grand breakfast. Eggs and bacon and lashings of tea. Oh, Mrs. Kelly. But I wasn't hinting, really, I wasn't. And I can't pay. Ah, to hell with paying. You could have this. It's what I wore in the second act. I'm afraid it wouldn't fit you very well. Ah, what a hope. Well, what might you be doing, young man? I'll have no snooping around here. I'm a respectable woman, I am, so go along quick now before I fetch the police. I'm from the immigration department. Oh, indeed. You got a dame here, blonde, English. Well, and what if I have? Hasn't she had a bad enough time in America without you coming around here bothering her? So she's sailing today. What time? What's that to you? There's nothing again, the girl. I didn't say there was. Oh, all right, all right, I'll tell you. What the devil business is it? Yes. Pier 11, 4.30. Pier 11. But there's no need to shout, my dear fellow. Or, or, or to use talk of that kind. I'm not deaf. You should learn self-control. Who is it? It's Harrigan, dear boy. Well? The girl's sailing today. Well, tell him to book a passage himself. Do anything he likes as long as he keeps her mouth shut. Isn't it a bit hard? The girl, so young, so tender is the only person alive who knows that we were in that apartment last night. Give me the phone. Steve, is Mr. Billy Cooper on board? There are 2,000 passengers on this ship, miss, and I don't know none of them personally. Oh. Would you like me to look through the passenger list for you? No, thank you. It doesn't matter now. Not bad news, I hope. It wasn't only one I knew very well. But he was very kind to me. She looks a nice kid, but she's certainly going to have a rough passage. Yeah.
I hate to do this, Captain, but I must do my duty, you understand. As a good citizen, I got to support the law. Quite so. Come in. Oh, it's you, is it? Please sit down, Miss Carr. He's been trying to get friendly ever since we sailed, but I want to have Just a minute, anything, But he has. Mr. Harrigan has laid a serious charge against you. Against me? I like that. A I moment, don't... please. Mr. Harrigan has lost a gold wristwatch, a silver cigarette case, and lots of other things. He's been very careless. May I have your trunk searched? I haven't got any trunk. Your suitcase? Of course you can if you want to. Yeah, I wish I knew what it was all about. Don't worry, Miss Carr. Why oh, not? He's only doing it because I wouldn't let him make love to me. Why on earth men should think that all chorus girls are... That's uh, hardly a matter we can discuss here, Miss Carr. Now then, just you say you're sorry. Are these yours? But I didn't take them. I didn't, I didn't. He put them there just because I wouldn't be nice to him. That's Miss Carr, please. Put them there. I'm sure you have a lot to say. Yes, I but have. But you must excuse me, I've got a ship to run. I'm only a magistrate because we're in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. You'll have to wait till you get to Southampton. Well, are you going to prosecute? Poor girl, I hardly know what to do. Make up your mind. If you are going to prosecute, I shall have to wireless the police to meet her. Would this mean that she'd go to jail? Of course it would. Breaks my heart, Captain, but I got to uphold the law. These girls get away with too much, as it is. Paper, New York Republican. Late edition, we all will news. Thank you. Paper, late edition. Republican, late edition. Republican. Man held in lawyer murder. Man held in lawyer murder. Late edition. You can read all about it. Paper, late x -ray. New York Republican. Poor Mr. Brand. Oh, dear, oh, dear. What the hell are you talking about? We're ruined. Oh, what? Uh, the gang, if I may use the word. Say, hey, what? Such a leader, an honor to serve him, and now these dreadful policemen, quite at their mercy. Uh, who is? Y you are. Mr. Brandt, you're arrested. Who said so? The police, the lawyer murder. You're not telling me that I killed Billy. But of course, we know you did. You may know it, Mortimer, and I may know it, but uh, read your newspaper. You mustn't jump to conclusions. So you just dropped in for a meal. Just climbed to the 14th floor for a chicken leg. But I was hungry. Honest, I was. It was the first apartment. It was dark. Not too dark for you to put a bullet through him. I didn't do it. I swear I didn't. It must have been one of the other men. What were their names? I don't know. What do they look like? I don't know. What were they talking about? I don't know. You don't know. Poor fellow's having a tough time. Now, Abel, isn't it curious that no one else has seen these men you speak of? But they did. The girl did. Ah, we're back to the girl again. She saw me leave while Mr. Cooper was still alive. Doubtless, uh, your attorney, a uh, man of the greatest attainments, has searched persistently for this missing witness. Sure he has. Your appeal to her has been spread far and wide. Sure. And she has nothing to fear in coming forward. No. Then if your story is true, and if this girl really does exist, isn't it rather strange that we've seen nothing of her? I don't think this rather Very vague strange. person needs Very to be caught in I'm going to England. The Scotland Yard, dear boy. What about it? Let's face it. The name Brent, it stinks. Mm, that's why I'm not going to use it. So dressing up again. Dressing up. Have you considered an Anglican bishop? The apron, a splendid disguise. When in doubt, I always say I'm the Archbishop of Canterbury. I'm sailing tonight and you're coming with me. Oh, no, dear boy. I'm not popular in England. When the girl comes out of jail, we none of us will be popular. She knows too much. And you're coming to stop her talking. But uh, supposing we're seen together? Don't worry, we won't be seen together. But on a ship, uh, as first-class passengers... Uh, you won't be a first-class passenger. Henry Abel, you've been found guilty of murder in the first degree. The sentence of this court is that you be delivered to the warden at Sing Sing. There to be put to death in the manner prescribed by law during the week...
conclusion, I want to thank the International Broadcasting Company for the use of their facilities in broadcasting this appeal over a national hookup. This English girl, for my client Abel in his testimony clearly identified her accent, may still be in the United States, or she may have returned to England. Wherever she is, if she will come forward now to substantiate my last appeal to the governor of this state, it may save a man's life, as otherwise that man will die. I will undertake to do my utmost to defend her against official punishment or unofficial vengeance, should this be deterring her. I say again to her, wherever she is, whoever she is, a man's life is at stake. When is my daughter coming out? Name? Carr. Jimmy Carr. Any minute now. You know, she didn't do it. Of course not. They never do. Did it? Did you have a nice time? Oh, no, of course you didn't. I don't think you're looking no better for it. I've got a fine breakfast for you. Better than the chili. Of course, I didn't hardly like to take the morning off. Besides, it's the manager. And every day a mother goes to meet her daughter like this. You didn't tell him where I was. Now, dear, I gave him the idea that she was in some sort of hospital. He said, is she sick? I said, not off, she ain't. Who is there? Oh, that's the new gentleman upstairs. He's a nice-spoken gentleman, sort of religious. He wants to come down and meet you. <laughs> oh, good morning, Mr. Rotherham. Oh, good morning. So this is the little daughter we've heard so much about. How do you do? How do you do? A cup of tea, Mr. Lawson. Thank you. Where did you get these? <laughs> oh, that's my new job. Scrubbing a travel bureau in the city. My goodness. But I know that man. Oh, don't talk silly, dear. But I do. I'll stop pointing at a murderer and come and have your chair. But he didn't do it. That's just what I said to Mrs. Johnson. I know he didn't. I was there. How oh, she sat imaginative, Mr. Mortimer, when she was a little girl. Always seeing elephants in the old tent row. Now, where are you going? Scotland Yard. A young lady, we know you've been through a trying experience, which might make any girl suffer from illusions. Don't forget you've just come out of prison. Suppose you didn't persuade the police that it wasn't an illusion, and this man is innocent. After all, somebody shot Billy Cooper. How could you prove that it wasn't you? That's right, dear. Besides, I've got a little surprise for you. They're rather short-handed at the office, and the manager said that if you would like the job... What's the matter, dear? What I read in the paper. Oh, that. I could prove he's telling the truth. I saw those men there, and I saw him go away before... Before Billy was killed. Going on the stage ain't done you no good. All right, you needn't believe him, but it's true. And now he's in the death house. They'll all be very nice to him because they know he's going to die. Oh, don't talk horrible. Day after tomorrow it is. And everyone in the prison will know it's going to happen. They'll all be waiting. Jimmy. It wouldn't be so bad if you knew you'd done it. At least it'd be fair. Hadn't.
Miss. The inspector will see you in a minute. But I've come about the New York murder. That's just what the others said. But don't you see, I'm the missing witness. Just what the others said. Poor Mr. Abel. I think of him always as the man with the haunting eyes. Believe it or not, Inspector, night after night I've lain without closing my lids, listening to his voice crying out to me in the dark. Just what did the voice cry out? Miss Louise, Miss Louise, come to my succor. To where? My succor. You know, that means help. Why didn't you come here before? Oh, I would have honest, only I was afraid of the publicity. What made you think there'd be any publicity? Won't there be? Uh, uh, won't there be? By the way, what boat did you come home on? Uh, oh, I can't quite remember. <laughs> you see, I was only invited on the stir at the moment. <laughs> well, how many funnels did it have? Funnels? Well, you can't expect me to go around counting the funnels now, can you? I suppose that was the ordinary number, or I just noticed. Yes, I, I, I do remember. It was the Mauritania. Certain? Yes, I remember asking the captain. That's funny, because the Mauritania's on the scrap heap. Yes, I noticed at the time. It seemed a bit wetly. As a matter of fact, she was broken up two years before the murder. Oh, really? Yes. Then it must have been some other boat. And some other girl. Good morning. Well, really. I've never been so insulted. I always thought the police were gentlemen. We do our best, but we don't supply free trips to New York. Well, of all the... This way, madam. All right, all right. I'll know the way. What about all the time I've wasted on him, hmm? I may not be his type. There's some people who can appreciate a nice lady's behavior, and they don't mind me. Jenny Carr, 127 Appleby Road, Southwark. And I went to New York to act in a play, and I was bumped into by a man who was bumped off on New Year's Eve. And he took me to his flat apartment, they call him. And whilst he was there and I was on the balcony, I saw a man and... Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. But it's true. I didn't say it wasn't, did I? No. Name, please. Jenny Carr. Jenny Carr. Address? 127 Appleby Road, Southwark. S.E. 1. I observed the accused Abel emerge from the bedroom window, marked A on the plan, and proceed across the balcony, at the conclusion of which I was removed from the apartment. As I proceeded across the hall, I observed a man. I remember nothing at all about him. He looked important. How do you mean important? Well, um... Important. Important. I then left the apartment carrying the chicken bone, which I consumed as I descended the stairs. At about 12.40 a.m. Oh, dear... What's the matter? Sound rather silly, doesn't it? Yes, that's just what I was thinking. Perhaps it's the way you're reading it. I'm trying to make it convincing, but it's not what you call an unbroken line of evidence. Isn't it? I suppose it isn't. How do you expect me to remember? I didn't know there was going to be a murder. If it's true, can't you give me any details? These two men, don't you know anything about them? Yes, they were Americans. Not unusual in America. I don't think you believe me. How about the uh, important man? I don't remember. Yes, I do. I'd know him if I saw him strike a match. You'd know him if you saw him strike a match? Yes. Is that the best you can do? Yes, I'm afraid it is. I suppose if a man had asked you back for supper, you'd have taken your little notebook and written everything down. Now they say you can't take your Don't you dare lay hands on Jenny, in the nick of time. You'll excuse me, won't you, Inspector? Oh, any time you're passing, just break in. My name is Mortimer. I lodge at the house of this unfortunate girl's mother. Excellent woman. Salt of the earth. Don't you listen to him. He tried to stop me coming here. Oh, he did, did he? And Jenny's just out of prison, and her poor mother in tears. Don't you listen to him, I tell you. No, don't be too hard on her. Stage struck, no job, her craving for publicity. And there's no truth in her story? Her claim to have been present to the Ricelip murder. Ricelip? I'm talking about a murder in New York. Is there no end to her imagination? Was she there too? Did, did you discuss coming here? Yes. And no, did everyone no, try and persuade you not to? Yes, but Is it true you're an actress out of a job? Yes, if you And if you were announced as the witness, me. would you get publicity? And would publicity help you to get a job as an actress? Come back and see me when you've had your pearls stolen. Of all the flat-footed... Don't be too hard on her. Don't worry. Then we won't hear any more about this. That's all right. Thanks, dear boy. Thanks.
Amin. A letter for you, sir. Thank you. Shall I pour the whiskey, sir? Please. Anything else, sir? No. Uh, yes. Tell the manager I don't wish to be disturbed. And especially I do not wish to receive reporters. New York reporters, sir? Uh, all reporters. Yes, sir. What did you say, New York? Nothing, sir. Your manner. I rather formed the impression. Oh, I have lived there, uh, yes. But I come from Paraguay. That is my heaven and my hell. And now I go back to my country. I shall be dictator or martyr. The president's palace or the firing squad. It is life. We live even when we die in Paraguay. Yes, sir. Mr. Pryor. If you want to put half a dollar on, you go upstairs and give it to the boy. No street betting with me. It's against the law. Honest Sam, that's me. I don't wish to wager, Mr. Pryor. You don't? What about crayfish for the 330? There's a nice little horse. I can do you ten to one about crayfish. Mr. Pryor, I once supplied you with a letter acquired in the course of my professional duties. I don't know what you're talking about. You resold it to the lady for 50 pounds. That's past history. I found another letter just by chance, much more valuable. I thought that as you were interested in blackmail... Me? Interested? You stand there and call me a blackmailer? If I buy something somebody else wants, that's business. For two pins, I'd hand you over to the nearest cop. For two pins, I'd take you with a scrap of the neck. For two pins... Come inside. I'm glad to say that we shall hear no further of the young lady. She got to Scotland Yard with two days in hand. But our friend in Sing Sing still goes to that uncomfortable chair. What do you want me to do? Buy him a cushion? No. Oh. I want to hedge a hundred pounds worth of golden spur. Bit business like Mr. Pryor. Who dies in Sing Sing in two days? A gentleman called Abel. Well, try someone else. The missing witness. You've heard of her. Someone wants to keep her out of the way. Sit down. Have a drink. You were always one for blackmail, Mr. Pryor. Blackmail? Never heard the word. Who's the letter to? Finders keepers. You'll have to buy it. What? Thirty bob. The police would give me more. How do I know it's genuine? You don't trust me. As far as I could throw a grand piano? No one trusts me. Three quid. Mr. Pryor, my price is five. Sir, what's one to 3.30? Blackmail. <laughs> it's fate. All right, five quid. Guineas, Mr. Pryor. I always prefer guineas. <laughs> five bob for the missus. Hotel Majestic, give me General Costello. No, I won't leave any name. I'd like it to be a surprise. Such fun, blackmail. You drink your drink and get out. Corn? Corn where? Oh, all right. Thanks. Disappointment, Mr. Pryor. He's leaving for New York by the airmail. What are you going to do? Buy a bathing suit and swim after him? Is that Atlantic Airways? Have you a private cabin? No, Jubilee. Of course I do. Of all the impudence. Such a nice-spoken gentleman, too. When did he first come here? It was just after you went inside. Did he say anything about having been in America? There was a New York label on his trunk. You don't think he had anything to do with this horrible affair? Yes, I do. And I may have been harboring a murderer. I'll have his room fumigated from floor to ceiling. What are we going to do? It's no good going to police again. Who is I in the telegram to the president? Oh, we must get under it. If I could only get to New York, they believe me. But it takes four days. And they left you for take the poor gentleman tomorrow. The idea. Fingering my posters with his bloodstained ends. Jenny. London to New York. 18 hours. Fair 65 pounds. And we've got 17 and fourpence between us. Judge my astonishment, Mr. Grant, when Sam Pryor rang up and booked a place on the airmail. Well, go on. You might show a little interest. What's he up to? Business, Mr. Grant. Blackmail, if I may use the word. Who's he after? 
Oh, Mr. Grant, you can't expect me to know absolutely everything. Are you certain? May I be struck down this very moment? Don't risk it. Here you are, five bob. It's worth more, Mr. Grant. It's an insult. Take it or leave it. I'm surprised at you, Mr. Grant. You are stingy. Go on, get out. Does he ever speak the truth? Occasionally. Sounds like Sam to me. I wonder where he's got hold of this time. He's probably a businessman tied up with a girl. Sam always had a taste for romance. And businessmen usually pay up, hmm? Yeah, they're not going to this time. How'd you like a trip to New York? Very much. I want Sam kept out of mischief. We'd better book on the airmail. Thank you, sir. Infant prodigy. Plays the violin like an angel. Oh. In my country, we shoot them. Will you tell me oh, something? Oh, please doctor? don't tread on him. He's not very big. Do control yourself, aren't you? Oh, sweet child. Aren't you excited at playing with the Philharmonic? No, I'm not. Oh, of course, he is dreadfully excited. Aren't you? Yes, it means so. Oh, not. Please excuse him. Aeroplanes always excite him. But the Philharmonic's so wonderful. Everybody listens to them. You must be excited. Not a bit. Why not? I don't like music. Oh, no, please. Oh. Costello? Costello, D2. That's him, sir. General Costello. Much obliged. Thank you very much. Excuse me, sir. This looks like a bad one. Keep it, my man. Keep it. Yeah, but what can I do with it? I should be the last to say. Promise me you'll have mustard bath afters and put a stocking round your throat. All right, Jim, I will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Pilot, miss? Because that's the control room. Oh, of course it is. How stupid of me. I couldn't very well fly the plane, could I? Not with me on it. <laughs> no. Shall I show you the way, miss? Uh, no, thank you. Please don't bother. That's all right, miss. I like a bit of bother. It's quite all right. I, I can take care of myself. Yes, miss. That's right, dear. Think of the Philharmonic. I am thinking of it. Arnold, you're very unkind. You know how much I want you to make a success. Why? Well, because... Don't you want to make a success? No, I don't. Then you won't be able to get any new contract. And you won't be able to get a new fur coat. On. Wonderful, isn't it? He simply lives for his music. Wait a minute. Nearly 
missed it, sir. Right away. All oh, right, your name should be on this door, sir. But as you book late, we didn't get it through. That's funny. It's locked. Can't get you off it, you There you are, sir. Is there a Mr. Sam Pryor among the passengers, steward? Uh, yes, sir, number 15. Thanks. Uh, excuse me, sir. Is he a friend of yours? In a kind of way. Oh. Well, perhaps you wouldn't mind returning this half crown to him. He ain't finished it. It's a small world, isn't it? Yes, isn't it? A small wardrobe, too. You just make yourself at home. Thanks so much. You're not by any chance a stowaway. No. No, oh, you just live in wardrobes during the winter months. Yes, that's right. Moths do, too. Come on, get out. Where to? Anywhere, but get off this plane. Mr. Grant, Come I have on. special reasons for being here. I suppose you want to tell me that you were there and Dr. Crippen had nothing to do with it. I'm serious. So was Dr. Crippen and so am I. If you so much as touch that bell, I'll... I'll... You what? I'll scream for help and tell the steward you attack me. You look terrible. I mean it. Why are you so keen to go to New York? I told you once and you wouldn't believe me. You're just a policeman. All you mind about is stringing people up. And not you care if they're innocent or guilty. But you do care. Yes, I do. Car. I have a good mind to let you get away with this. Inspector Grant, I'm afraid you'll have to. What do you mean? Don't look around, but I think we're taking off. Thank you so much for our nice talk. And I'll have my toothbrush. Steward, that young lady who just went out, Miss Carr. Yes, sir. You rather fancy herself as a stowaway. A stowaway? Who let her in? Well, you did for one. I want you to go to the captain and tell him I'll be responsible for her ticket. Don't let her know who's doing this. Yes. Nice looking young lady, sir. That has nothing whatever to do with it. No, sir. Hello. Well, why are you doing that? What are you up to, key only? I was looking for an empty cabin. Well, there isn't one. I'm giving it to the stowaway. Well, where can I practice my saxophone? Oh, that reminds me. The captain specially asked me to tell you not to play that on account of a passenger that's barmy. There isn't a passenger that's barmy. No, but there will be if you play that saxophone. Come in. General Costello. I do not talk with strangers. I'll do the talking. Seen that letter before? Never. That's funny, because uh, it's addressed to you. Well, perhaps they forgot to put it in the post. It's to tell you they've got rid of the witness in the Abel case. Very kind of them to tell me, but why should it interest me? Never mind the bluff, General. I want a thousand pounds for this letter. Do I misunderstand, or are you a blackmailer? We don't call it that. I meet so many. I am rich. They make of me a target. And I bet they score a few bullseyes. Uh, usually it is a woman. They make up letters from me. Very bad letters. Sometimes I pay because I am a fool. That's enough, General. Do I get the thousand pounds or do I go to the police? Whether you go to the police or not depends on whether you stop this absurd nonsense. You bring me a letter I have never seen. It was in your room? How do you know? Did you see it there? You did not. Someone sold it to you. Someone you trust? I see you do not. That's got nothing whatever to do with it. Oh, my poor friend, it has. You buy a letter from a man you do not trust and you try to blackmail General Costello. In my country, in Paraguay, I have had men shot for less. 
Did you think to inquire at my embassy? If you had, they would have told you that I was in Paraguay when this murder was committed. Come off it, General. I want money. So you persist. I have been patient. Now I shall punish. This is a matter for the Capitan. He will radio to my government in Paraguay. I shall demand your arrest. Steady on, General. I didn't mean it. It's only fun. You should keep your fun for those who do not take it too seriously. If you're really General Costello, I, I suppose the joke's on me. Allow me, General. You seem to be better with one hand than I am with two. Infinitely better. Now leave me, please. Certainly, General. No offense, General. No offense, my poor friend. <laughs> Then you didn't bring it up. Well, if it isn't Mr. Grant. Always pleased to see old friends. Mm, they're better than new ones. You don't look as though you've been too successful with uh, General Costello, which means you were on the wrong scent. I don't know what you're talking about. It's difficult to notice scent when there's policemen about. Sam, if you're thinking of looking around for a new victim, don't. We workers never let up, Mr. Grant. Mm, so I gather you don't happen to have change for half a crown. <laughs> Certainly. Anything to oblige. Thanks very much. With Mr. Pryor's compliments. That's very kind of him, sir. What's the idea? Well, Auntie doesn't like this, so I came in here. Well, I hate it, so you can go away. Well, there's nowhere else to go. They've given me every cabin to the stowaway. Oh, no, what stowaway? Oh, Mr. Grant's friend. Yeah. Tell me about that. Could I tell you anything when you're pulling my ear off? Oh. I don't think I'll tell you anyway. All right. I'll pay. You what? I'll buy the information. How much? How much do you want? Three bob. Three bob? Well, two bob. Don't let's be ungenerous. Make it half a crown. I'm glad this man hasn't annoyed you. No, no. It is a mere flea bite. And in my country, we are used to flea bites. Well, if he worries you anymore, just let me know. Thank you. You shall be my guest and kill him. You are a policeman. You will like that, huh? You can't blackmail small boys for playing saxophones, you know. You're quite right, Mr. Grant. Then why so cheerful? Animal spirits, just animal spirits. Sam Brown. Just what have you got on the general? I don't follow, Mr. Grant. Well, you can't blackmail a man unless he's done something to be ashamed of. Perhaps he was once a policeman. What do they do to stairways on flying boats? Do they have to peel potatoes? We mostly send them aloft to scrape the ice off the wings. Oh. I think I will have a drink after all. Martini? A little water. Don't you put any ice in it. Stuart, what cabin did you give Miss Carr? D-5, sir. Is that a nice one? One of the best, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Sure. No, thank you, sir. I've had one. Excuse me, but did you say Miss Carr? I did. But I'm Miss Carr. Exactly. I couldn't let you work your passage in the galley. Thank you. Very kind of you. Not a bit. Anybody who's a friend of Jim Grant's. You haven't got anything to do with Scotland Yard. Yes, quite a lot from time to time. I didn't notice you when I saw Inspector Grant. No, well, he's in a different part of the building. What we jokingly call the slum end, you know. <laughs> I suppose you're in the classy part. Well, I don't want to boast. By the way, what exactly did you tell Jim Grant? Well... Come over here. Now, I'll be quite frank with you, Miss Carr. My name is Pryor. Superintendent Sam Pryor, CID. Now, I know you won't repeat this. Trust my heart. But uh, Jim Grant's been overworking. Such a nice fella, too. Sort of nervous breakdown. That's why we're giving him this little holiday. I'm taking over his work. Wouldn't you be able to help me? Yes, of course. Of course. Now, just what did you tell poor Jim? Why, that I saw a man who killed Billy Cooper. What? I saw the man who killed Billy Cooper. My dear girl, do you realize this is very valuable information? You bet I do. They're going to kill an innocent man tomorrow, but I'm going to stop them. I'll show you to your cabin, miss. Oh, thank you. Uh, you run along. You follow. Yes, sir. Uh, miss Carr, hmm? what you've told me rather alters my plans. You didn't happen to notice if one of them was a foreign-looking chap? 
Very military, moustache, sort of bullfighter. You're going to make fun of me, too. I shan't tell you another thing. No, no, I mean it. Wasn't anybody like that? I was afraid not. Two of them were quite ordinary. The third, I didn't see his face, but he had a funny way of striking a match with one hand. Like that? Yes, that's it. Don't breathe a word of this to anyone. Leave everything to me. And remember, don't call me superintendent in public. I'm strictly in cog. Oh, I see, yes. If you should run across that kid, Arnold James, I wish you'd send him along here. Right here. What do you want me for? Oh, been listening, eh? No, I haven't. I only wanted to find out if they put water in people's drinks. You'll be lucky if you don't find poison in yours. Are you really a superintendent? You're not my idea. Never mind who I am. I've got a job for you. Now, we've a notion this General Costello isn't General Costello. Well, who is he, then? Can't say. Confidential. Well, what's the job? I want you to find out if he really comes from Paraguay. Well, I don't know anything about Paraguay. There's a town called Villa Rica, and they all wear uniform in their bath. Go on. Well, supposing he gets tough. Shall I knock him down? No, no need to do that. Just threaten him with your saxophone. Hello. Hello. Did you get it fixed up? Yes, thank you. I am terribly sorry I was so nasty to do. Oh, that's all right. You see, I didn't know. You look so strong and fit. Yes? What do you want? Do you come from Paraguay? Yes, I do. Then you know my grandmother, Mrs. James. No, I do not. You come from Paraguay and you don't know my grandmother? Why, she owns half Villarica. Everybody knows Mrs. James. Oh, Mrs. James, the Mrs. James. You must scold me for being so stupid. You know the old lady? Intimately. Thanks very much. Is that all you wanted to know? Yes. No one sent you to question me? No, sir. Not a man with a loud voice in a check suit? No, sir. I only came because... because I just didn't think you'd know Grandma. Uh, because Grandma shot the commons, that's all. Oh, I see. Well, you should tell your aunt to take a broader view of things. Your grandmother is a very remarkable woman. Only don't tell Auntie I told you so. No, sir, I won't. That's him eating soup. Oh, please, will you help me? I'm so worried. It's Arnold. What is? He's disappeared, completely disappeared. Do you think he could have thrown himself overboard? Why should he? He's so sensitive, and I spoke harshly to him. I'll never speak harshly to him again. Never. That's the stuff. Arnold! How dare you frighten me like that? Where have you been? Nowhere. Oh, yes, you have. Don't you lie to me. I can't leave you alone for a moment. You're a nasty, ungrateful little boy. And I never, never, never... Such a relief to find him again. His hands are insured for 10,000 pounds. Auntie tried to insure her legs, but nobody'd have them. Oh, Arnold, you know that's not true. Well, it makes a good story anyway. Oh, do you think so? No soup for me, thank you. It's no good. I can't eat soup in the air. It does sound difficult. I'm nervous, apprehensive. Of course, I've never actually been in a crash, but I'm what you might call crash conscious. Stuart, why doesn't this company provide parachutes for passengers? Seeing as how we're over the Atlantic Ocean, they don't encourage mixed babies. What a rude man. Rather common, like the old lady from Paraguay. Huh? What on earth did he mean? I think he wanted to tell you a limerick. How disgusting. That dreadful man pat you. He didn't pat me. He was wiping his hand. Feeling peckish, General? Mm. I let you into a secret. I brought my own parachute. Did you bring one along for Arnold? No, but I'm sure there's room for two. Is Miss Carr coming into dinner, sir? We're anticipating it, sir. I do hope you're feeling better. What is this? Do I look like an invalid? Oh, Miss Carr. Excuse me. I'm afraid I must ask you to sit over here. Yes, Your Grace. Yes, Mr. Carr. General. 
I know you'll be interested to meet Miss Carr. Good evening. How do you do? Haven't I seen you somewhere before? Alas, no. Between you and me, and you won't let it go any further, Miss Carr's the missing witness in the Cooper murder case. How very exciting for you. And I don't mind letting you into a secret. It won't be Abel that goes to the chair. Stuart, some soup for Miss Carr. What were you saying? Never mind. It wasn't important. <laughs> You were unkind to that young man, refusing to sit at his table. He was most upset. Never touched his turbot. Such a nice turbot, too. Arnold had three helpings. What on earth are you talking about? That handsome young detective, my dear sir. Oh, him. Why don't you go and apologize to him? I never apologize to handsome young men. I do. It often has most interesting results. Soft music, Arnold. You know, I didn't like you a bit when I met you in Scotland Yard. I didn't much care for you either. <laughs> you do believe me now, don't you? Believe you? About the murder. Oh, yes, the murder. By the way, what did you come out to tell me? Oh, that I was sorry I couldn't sit at your table tonight. Oh, that was it. You see, Superintendent Fire insisted. What? He absolutely insisted. Who did? Superintendent Pryor. You do understand, don't you? Indeed I do. Excuse me. Well, don't worry, my dear. He was just a little abrupt. Abrupt? You bet he's abrupt. Detectives often are. I was engaged to one 20 years ago, and he had to rush off just like that. Really? Yes, and he hasn't come back yet. Sam! Oh. Hello, Inspector. Hello, Superintendent. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Just a little harmless vanity, you know. I hope that's all it was. Well, what else could it be? I don't know. Perhaps she told you she was the witness in the Abel case. She told everyone else. Or maybe you were after some information that you could turn into money. Oh, what a dreadful idea. Sam, you're wasting your time. In the first place, I've got my eye on you. In the second place, I won't have you interfering with this girl. And in the third place, she knows nothing worth speaking of about the murder. And in the fourth place, I don't think she was there at all. And in the fifth and last place, you may be darn good in the moonlight, but as a policeman, you're just awful. <laughs> oh, I could kiss you for that. I have. I don't mind letting you into a secret. It won't be Abel who goes to the chair. Haven't we met somewhere before? along the coast of Newfoundland? Yes, sir. And how long shall we be over land? About half an hour, sir. Chill up, my poor friend. I'm going to bed. Good night. Pleasant dreams. Will you be wanting anything else, sir? Passengers mostly go to bed before this. Then follow their example and sleep well. Thanks. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night. To run down several important clues. Albany, New York. The last minute attempt to save the life of Abel, convicted murder of William Cooper, the New York lawyer, failed. The news was broken to Abel in his cell, and he received the grim tidings quietly. He thanked the warden for his helpfulness and calmly went to sleep, apparently without a thought of his fate. Sanford. Perhaps he's got a sort of feeling that someone's coming to help him. And perhaps he has. It's funny to think that if anything should happen to this plane, or, or if I were to jump through that window. They'd kill an innocent man. Very strange. Look. I wonder.
is it the boat I came over? Can't see. Come, I'll show you where you can see. Here we are. Afraid? Of course. Quickly or you'll wake the whole ship. been a bad general. I slapped a rat in his knuckles. What's the matter? D nothing. Is there, general? Good night. Good night. Oh, my poor friend. In my country in Paraguay, I've had men shot for less. And as you're not General Costello, the joke's on you. Okay, a thousand pounds. Oh, no. It's 20,000 now. I've got something more valuable to sell. The right to murder an innocent young lady. Twenty thousand. You wouldn't have me stand aside for less, would you? Think of a shock to my conscience. Very well. well I have to pay you in New York. Nothing doing. When we get to New York, there'll be no little girl, and so the poor dog gets none. What do you think I am? A man who travels with a roll of bills. Cash down, you can do as you like. No cash, I'll be a father to the girl. Hard cash. Always believed in it, always will. I'm sorry. I tried to cheat you. No offense. Do it myself. I've got money in my baggage. In the baggage room. The bonds I took from poor Billy. I cashed them in Europe. Why in the baggage room? In the custody of a solid British air company. Safer than carrying them on me, with people like you about. The baggage room's in there. Is it? And it's locked. Don't you think you could open it? Open it? You picked the lock before? That's as may be, but I'm going straight. But there. It's my money, so it wouldn't be stealing. Twenty thousand pounds. All right. I'm a bit out of practice, but I'll try. What are you doing? Can't you open this door? You don't. It's bolted from the inside. Why is it? To stop little boys from annoying the pilots. I want his parachute. Just took it out, and it won't go back. <laughs> Give it to me. I'll do it for you. There we are. Don't you think as I've opened the door as well, we might make it 25,000? Never mind. You ready? Right.
Stand still. If you move, I shall be compelled to shoot. But the girl first. But I don't want to do it. I don't want to disturb the other pest. Well, what are you going to do about it? In two minutes, we shall be over Newfoundland when I take my leave. Aunt Veronica's parachute. I'll lay a wreath on her grave. by climbing over the top of the plane. Headquarters St. John. Wanted for murder. Costello thought to be Brent, notorious gang leader. Costello, after attempt to wreck plane, jumped with parachute. He should have landed. Uh, Captain, have you the exact reckoning? 
Looking for something, miss? Don't be a fool. The ship's sinking. Yes, miss. I can't find my parachute. It's gone. Yes, miss. Don't say yes, miss. Look for it. I, I knew it had gone, miss. General Costello has borrowed it. Borrowed it? What for? Oh, just to throw himself overboard. I don't believe it. He'd never take a lady's parachute. He's a soldier and a gentleman. Oh! Have it your own way, miss. Captain Arnold's got it. Where is Arnold? Well, the last time I saw him, miss, he was making a darn nuisance of himself. Well, find him and find my parachute. Don't leave me here to die. Oh, you won't do that, miss. Why, everything's okay. You're only saying that to comfort me. Oh, I wouldn't comfort you like that, miss. John's acknowledged your message. They're throwing out a police call. Don't forget you've got another message to send. Oh, sure I have. Ready, operator? Yes, sir. Police Commissioner O'Brien, New York City. Delay execution able. New evidence proving innocence. Arrive in New York midday. Grant Scotland Yard. I take it you believe me now. I do indeed. If you believe me in the first place, you'd have saved us all a lot of trouble. All the same. Everyone in this plane owes you their lives. What do you mean all the same? He's a jolly good detective. I think you'd get me a job in Scotland Yard just to make sure. Well, I might get you a job, but it wouldn't be in Scotland Yard. What's that? It's my own composition. The Atlantic Love Call. I thought I told you not to play that thing anymore. It's all right now. I've made it quite soft. You can hardly hear it. Arnold! Christmas. Arnold! Oh, there you are. Where have you been and where's my parachute? That's what we'd all like to know. What do you mean? It went overboard with General Costello in it. He stole it. I shall expect the company to buy me a new one. You hear that, Captain? Did you say that General Costello jumped overboard in that parachute? I did. Poor old General. Look here, young man, what's this got to do with you? Come on, out with it. With me? Oh, nothing. Not really. It, it, it's the saxophone. What about it? Well, you were all complaining it was so noisy. Yes? So I borrowed out his parachute. Well? And cut a piece out of it. I don't think the police will need that cordon after all. Oh, you horrible, horrible child. It might have been me. What should I have done? You'd have. 